consent. And horse. And close. And horse stands. Good. Welcome back. So, in previous weeks, we've uh, been filming from yellow through green. And we, we started on our second week. We are on our second week rotation when we started filming these. So, we did the two and the six and the ten and the fourteen. And then we did the three ons. And we did the fourth. Now we're going back to number one. So we do number one, and then number five, and then number nine, and number 13. So we're going to do those techniques from yellow through green. All right, you ready to go? All right, so delayed sword. Delayed sword, as all these techniques, are, is for a specific attack. Obviously, it works for many things. And when I, when I view techniques, I always like to look at the, their universal nature, so how universally they apply to different situations. So was this, does this sequence, this technique work in lots of places or just a couple or just one? And most of the Parker techniques work in lots of different situations. So delayed swords for a right hand grab. It'll work against a punch, a push, a two hand push, a left, whatever, a kick. Works against a lot of things. But delayed sword from a natural stance, we're doing it for a right hand grab. So as we drop back, we strike the arm. So again, we've accomplished a number of things. And when you analyze your techniques, starting with delayed sword, analyze all your techniques this way. What did I accomplish on this first move? Well, you gained distance, range. You moved away from the opponent. You also created a base to launch your attack from. You also defended yourself by moving their arms to the side and hopefully making them disengage. You also hopefully hurt their arm and injured it. So those are some of the basic things you've done, just in that first step. And then we can talk about how you got power and all these things later, but just get the basic principles of what comes after what and why. So it's a block, my other hand's checking in the center of my body. Immediately we go to a cat stance. Because in my neutral bow, I'm still within range. But now I should be just out of range of their left hand, let's say, but they're not out of range of my foot. And now, strike to the groin, and then strike to the neck. Okay? Let's see the uh, Mr. Lau and Mr. Ramirez do it once. So, mm -hmm. so they grab. He sets back and blocks. So you see, he got distance. He created a foundation to launch an attack from. He disengaged uh, Mr. Ramirez's arm, and hopefully he injured the arm. But you have to assume Mr. Ramirez is probably going to come start attacking with his other hand now. And if Mr. Lauer doesn't move, this arm can reach him. But if he then goes to a cat stance, he's a little bit out, and now he can still reach with his foot. Boom, Plus. and then strike Plus. to the neck. Okay? And again, so as we're here, as we drop back and strike, from this position, again, I want to move away by striking the groin. That accomplishes certain things. Remember, we talked about what I did on my first move. On my second move, I again gain a little more distance and also put myself in a better position to throw the, the next strike. Later on, you'll be inserting a strike in that transition, but not right now. So you're going to kick the groin. The kick to the groin hopefully hurts them, but even if it doesn't, the idea of him attacking me means he has to bring his torso forward. So come, just come forward. Yeah. So I want to stop his advancement. So when you kick here, even if it doesn't hurt him, if he's insane or on drugs or something, even if it doesn't physically hurt, it stops his torso from moving forward, and it also brings his head down, which brings the, my next target into my next weapon. This is my weapon, that's my target. So we strike, and then strike. So as he's coming forward, I'm coming forward. So you have weapon and target coming together. All right, maximizes the power. All right, one more time on each other. Mr. So I was doing on Mr. Barron's, he steps back in one. Good, yes, good. Good. Kick and strike. Yes, sir. Good. And you're facing 12 o'clock? Yeah. And sword and hammer. So sword and hammer, <clears throat> again, our shortest technique in the system. Two strikes. But again, more going on than just two strikes. But it's someone coming from our right rear flank, meaning basically if 12 o'clock is here, they're coming from 4.30, roughly. They could be coming from 3, even coming from 1.30, anywhere over here. So when they pin my shoulder with their hand, I pin their hand. We move our hand from point of origin. We don't cock it up. We bring it from down low and up to the throat. Immediately, arc it back down and hit to the groin. Okay? So one more time. We take our hand. This comes up and grabs their hand and grabs it very aggressively. Grab their hand and put your claws in. As we step one, 
and then two. So we have one, I'm going towards the opponents, that's depth and penetration, but it's back at mass, so I'm moving towards them. I rotate slightly, that's width, so I have depth and width. And of course, on the second move, even on the first, we have a little bit of height, but on the second one, you've got residual marriage gravity, residual height factor, and then pop, down the groin. So one, and then two. Ready, natural stance, and one, two. Good. On each other. Nice and smooth, easy technique. So he grabs, steps in, and hits. And right from point of origin, hammers down the groin. One more time. And one, two. Good, good, good. And again, last time, and one, two. Good. So to emphasize the most, some of the things emphasized in this one, some of the most important things is, do not cock your weapon to go to the target. Remember, their field of vision is basically his eyes or solar plexus, right? That's what you learn in your tempo. So as soon as, if it's down here, he probably doesn't notice it yet. If, his field, if he's looking towards me here, then his field of vision is about, the height zone's about here. So when it's down here, he doesn't see it coming. But as soon as you come up at least that height, he's probably gonna see it coming and could flinch, maybe move the target or get a, a hand up, right? Protect against my weapon. So you want to come from down low and strike this way. So I'm coming low and then up high, this way. So don't bring it up from where it is, straight up. You know, people think, I have to cock my arm. You don't. All that's going to do is give it a little bit of shoulder strength and then throw it with your shoulder. And that's going to add a little velocity. But the shoulder strength isn't anything compared to your hips turning and dropping. So as I pop, do this one, that's when they come in. Hit. It's a, a lot of power just straight in. And from there, you don't have to, you just make a slight arc. It's just a, 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 from here, it's a slight arc. It doesn't come straight down, because this wouldn't be an angle of incidence. It's here, slight arc down to the groin. So it's one, and then two. Okay? Ready? In the air, one more time. In the air. And one, two. And one, two. <laughs> All right, and capture twigs. So capture twigs. Bear hug from behind, arms pinned. Yell about technique number nine. So when they grab us around the waist, again, we can, even though they have our arms pinned, we can still probably have freedom of motion with our wrist and our hand. We talked about this uh, when we were doing, talking about finger set. When I do finger set, Mr. Parker taught that when you strike with your first uh, finger slice, it's the whole arm coming through. You slice through. But at the second two slices, now make your elbow stationary and do slice, slice. So it's all wrist. So it's arm and then wrist. So I'm coming through arm and then wrist. That hook. Just in case you're pinned up against the wall, for instance, you can't move your elbow, you still need to have some dexterity and be able to injure folks and have some, some uh, be lethal with your fingers. So you still slice and claw and tear and twist from this position. You went to out the use of motion of my whole arm. So get that dexterity in your fingers and your wrist. So uh, when we're doing this one, you're gonna pin, and we're just boom, pins, and hit to the groin. A lot of folks then will come here and raise their foot up and stomp. Don't do that. You slide up. I don't want to be looking down, so when I slide up, the, I use my sense not of sight, but of touch. And the bottom of my foot, when it touches the top of their foot, It'll be right around there somewhere. Stomp on it. One of the reasons that Parker doesn't want you to take your foot off the ground, <clears throat> one of our general rules in Kempo, general rules, keep both feet on the ground as often as possible. Only take your foot off the ground when you have to. So there's no reason to bring it up off the ground. And you don't really know where his foot is. Slide up until you feel it and stomp it. Then come right back, boom, elbow up to the jaw. Okay? And in the air. So they grab their left, step up one. And then slide over, stump, and then back in and up. Good. So in a perfect world, when you come over here, feel it, stomp it. You can feel it, and once you feel it, then pick it up and stomp if you want. But generally, when you're first doing this, and certainly when you're first teaching it, strike, slide over, stump, without taking your foot completely off the ground, and then come back in. The stomp and the first strike, the hammer to the groin, bent, their, bent them over so their head's down. So pop, you hit it with that. Obscured elbow. Good. And <clears throat> so he steps off one. Boys. So again, point of origin with his left hand to grab, point of origin with his right hand for the hammer. 
Slides over, feels the foot, stomps. Boom, comes back in and elbows up. Go one more time. So he steps, grabs, and hits all at once. Slides over, feels it, stomps it. Comes back in and boom. Okay? All right. And Mr. Ramirez, do it once on Mr. Lauer. So we step over one, slide over, stomp it, and come back in and elbow. One last time. So capture twigs and one, two, three, four, boom, and bang. Good. All right, let's move on to the orange belt. So trigger salute. Trigger salute is for a right push. We always talk about moving weapon, moving target. So move target in, on this. They're pushing here, right? It's like a hinge. Don't stand there and be the door, let them push you and let it knock you off your, your stance. Just simply, if they're pushing here, turn. As you turn, like I say, there's other techniques we have and that you can just turn this way into a twist stance and move on from there. But instead of just turning here as they push, and turning, let them go by, which is similar to a lot of Kung Fu systems do, a lot of Chinese systems, Simply be, in my opinion, too defensive, too purely defensive. They go to push, let them on by. Well, you can't without hurting them because they're going to, if they try to hurt you once and then they felt uh, no repercussions from that, that, nothing bad happened to them because they tried, they're going to try to attack you again. Eventually they're going to hit you and they're going to hurt you. So as they go to push, yes, I'm going to turn, but I'm going to pin too to make sure they stay there. Make sure I have a, a hold of them now. So you could just turn here and hit with the heel pump, but I stayed in place. So instead of just turning and pinning, and just turning and pinning heel bomb, which is a nice technique, just from there, just hit, we're going to step in. It's a little more aggressive. So as you step in, turn, pin, and hit. And now, hook your hand, and again, this strike, the, the, get this hook going, the trunk, strike on the top and outside of their right arm. It strikes. And just as I use my marriage gravity to strike down, I turn. All right? So I want to turn that a little bit. And then elbow inward, elbow outward, back knuckle, and uppercut. Okay? So let's just walk through it. So we're stepping in one, two, three, four, five, and six. And walk through it. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is still holding, good strong stance. And gentlemen face each other. Yeah, on the three nine, yep. Yeah. And so one. And remember, three points of contact. One point of contact is where he has the hand. Second point of contact. Third point of contact should be at their knee with your knee or inside of their knee. And then on two, hooks and pulls it. Three, inward elbow, all the way through it. And then outward elbow, and then back knuckle, and uppercut. Okay? About half speed, all the way through, and go. There you go. And Mr. Lauer, can you do it on Mr. Ramirez? So he does boom, and comes down. Good. So when we're doing this, when this, this hand comes in, again, if he even just gets a little bit of me, it, start, it does that. It makes you go back. And if he comes in, I could go back and do it. Back is easy. Back is fine. But it's not as powerful. Because your body's moving backwards, so you don't have that back of the mass you would have coming forward. You still have the rotation, the rotation to hit, you have the marriage gravity, but you went backwards instead of forward. So when he comes, it, you sit it forward, again, you're doing a little bop with your leg there. From here, <clears throat> but again, on that next move, it's a strikes, you're striking, right, to, to the bicep and outside. It hits the bicep and slides down to the uh, elbow. Much like a technique later on you guys will learn called defining the rod. But you're hitting once, twice, and then turn it. And that turn is big because it helps check out that arm. So if I'm here working on this, he still can rotate hit me. I'm hitting down, yeah, that hurt him. I'm hitting down again, oh, that hurt him. But I didn't check his width. When you do this, it tends to check his width a little bit and hurt his shoulder. And that little pop, that Parker did to me when I, I didn't know it was coming. So I was doing the same thing. And it popped and this old oh, turn and kicked the back of my shoulder. It also opens up the ribs and it checks out that arm. So that little strike, strike, turn, it comes through, and then inward elbow, outward elbow, back elbow. So hit the boom. So as you come through, it's one, but it's two, three. That's two strikes. Elbow, back elbow, hit. And I still have this. I'm not let go of this. Okay? 
You see it on each other again? Shoot. And go. Good. And Mr. Lauer? Please. Beautiful. All right. Shielding hammer. Shielding hammer. Shielding hammer is for a left roundhouse punch. A left roundhouse punch. And we know from previous sessions that the person is in front of us, but since they're throwing a circular strike, the circular strike is always going to be coming from one of the 45 degree angles. <clears throat> so the strike is actually coming in this direction. So his punch is coming here, although he's standing there. I step in the direction that his energy is coming, that all of his power is coming. I want to have my uh, brace as I block. So they're in front, they're coming here to hit me in the head, drop back, strike, hammer right away across the nose. So you get that serrated effect. These knuckles, starting with the little knuckle all the way to the biggest knuckle, all right? You hit and blah, 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 right through the bridge of the nose, jaw, any target, but it's technically the bridge of the nose. This is still checking. Boom, come to your side. And now you bring it over like you're gonna pull, draw a sword. Bring it all the way to your hip. Now, push drag forward, that's pushing, and then dragging. A push drag is push the back foot and drag with the back foot. Simply move your front foot first. As you push drag, boom, get that outward elbow. My palm is up. You'll notice, and you, most of you guys watching this, some of you should know, that if you're doing an outward elbow, solar plexus, if it's above the solar plexus, your palm is down. If your hand's below your solar plexus, your palm is up. All right? The way the arm is built with the flexors and extensors, it's you have more freedom of motion. Once you come above your solar plexus, you have more freedom of motion and power when your palm is down. Below the solar plexus, you'll feel it. Move it up and down and do your strikes on a big bag or your brother or a relative you're not fond of. So if it's above, palm down. If it's below the solar plexus, palm up. This one, since you came here to draw your sword to your hip, your palm's already up. And you may go up on an angle, but right now just go straight in, but it's technically below your solar plexus, boom, so we're hitting that way, okay? Your fist could be closed or open. Either way, it doesn't really matter on this one, all right? Most people do it closed because it makes this more solid, but you're hitting with this anyway. Just reach out with it. All right, let's see it. So, uh, Mr. Maris is punching, Mr. Lyris is back block. Now the hammer's right across the nose and shuffles in and hits us. Good. One more time. Uh, switch places. Same thing, Mr. Lyris still doing it. And one. So stay. See? Mr. Ramirez is actually punching this direction. That's why that's what has to be there. All right? And then he hammers and shuffles in with the nose. Okay? And, and we talked about this. So if I step straight back and he's coming this way and I put up this arm, I can feel it now. If he pushes hard, it's just basically, he has momentum on his side and assume he's larger and stronger. All that's stopping right now is my shoulder muscle. It's just not, it's not enough. There's no brace at all. Once I step here, oh, that's, whole, that's a whole different thing. Now, it's this foot is bracing us and I'm striking straight out. So now you've got it. And the minute you hit it, you're actually break, you're breaking it right away. It's just pop, pop. It's just going one, two. As soon as you strike, I land with this, it's a pop, pop, straight away. And then go in. Don't go a one and think about two. So he's punching and it goes pop, pop. I mean, it's one, two. Almost like it's ricochet. And it's not. Two different directions. But it's, it's quick. All right, good. One last time. Mr. Lauer's going to do it on Mr. Ramirez. And go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 yeah. Very nice. Good. Shielding hammer. Yes. Fletching feathers. So fletching feathers for a left hand hair grab. Left hand hair grab. And again, we say hair grab. Not everyone has hair. We've gone over this before. But they've got a hold of you. The principle here of this technique is they've got a hold of you. Whatever they're grabbing, you grab the hand that grabs you. Right now it's the hair. They grab, you grab. So now you've got control of what their hand's doing, especially if it has a hold of you. We get here, my arm's still in front of me to protect myself. I drop back and strike. I don't have my arm out here, my face is too open. I have it here on a 45 degree angle. Middle knuckle strike, in. At that point, outward block, heel pump, and I keep this in front of me. It's not back here. Like you have to wind it up to punch. You don't. It's right here. Most of the power and strikes come from the hips, not from throwing your shoulder. So from this position, now just hammer. Now a lot of you guys do a hammer for this and sandwich, great, but it's technically not part of the base technique. So again, they grab you. One of the other of many rules of Kepo, generally speaking, when they grab you, you grab them. So they grab you, grab them. And we want to step back to straighten our arm out. Why? 
because it exposes the armpit. Why? Because there's a gland deep in the armpit, and along that gland there's a nerve. You hit that nerve, and their hand opens up. Cause an uh, involuntary reaction, their hand has to open. So the hand that's grabbing you, you're going to strike the armpit and hit that nerve, and ah, they start opening it up. We do a middle knuckle strike. You also can do a two-finger uh, poke because it can go deeper, but he doesn't, Mr. Parker doesn't have a two-finger poke on this one because it's for yellow belts going to orange belt. And he figures they don't quite know, maybe your fingers aren't ready yet to take that kind of pressure. Do it easier and simpler to do a middle knuckle, very strong. This is a weapon for soft tissue targets, all right, like jaw, cartilage targets, like nose, right, temple, things like that, all right? But you step in, or step back rather, and strike. So you stretch out his arm, exposing the armpit that's had that gland that has the nerve. Hit the nerve, makes the hand open up. Outward lock, heel pump, and hammer. Okay? Uh, on each other, gentlemen. So he grabs him, he grabs his hand, sets back one, boom. And it stretches him out, but also hurts a little bit, of course. But mainly you're trying to get uh, Mr. Lauer's left hand to start opening up, relieve the pressure. Then do an outward block and a heel pump, boom, and then hammer. That's it. Short technique, but uh, important. You'll see, as you guys know, as you go through the system, there's lots of techniques where they grab us, we pin their hand and step back to straighten their arm and expose other targets as well. But usually, oftentimes, you straighten the arm to break the arm. This time, you're straightening the arm to expose the target underneath. Ready? One last time. And go. That's it. Good. All right, fair enough. And dance to death. Dance Death is uh, one of the original uh, techniques in Mr. Parker's system. Back when there were very, very few techniques, this was, this was one of them. Uh, and it's gone through many, many different uh, uh, forms throughout the years. Uh, it, it changed around a lot. And Mr. Parker did change this a number of times. You'll, you'll know from Long Form 5, when you learn from Long Form 5, this technique is in Long 5. It's very different than, than you're about to see it here. So, Without getting into a half hour of history on this technique, this is how uh, Mr. Parker taught it to me, this is how I show it to you. So it's for a shuffle right punch, not a step through punch. It'll still work against a step through punch, but do it for a shuffle punch so it's easier to understand the principles and concepts that we're trying to learn in this technique. Remember, you're not just learning and memorizing a sequence, you're trying to understand the principles and concepts of how to move, how to move your body, that means your mass, through time and space. So, we're going to step in and block, immediately pivot to a forward bow to strike the ridge hand. From that position, again, we're going to go down and grab the leg, and, and today they're just going to grab each other's knee by grabbing near the knee, you grab the uniform, just today. Usually you're hooking behind the knee, or grabbing the knee and grabbing the flesh, grabbing the skin and muscle of the leg and tearing it as you pull, but nevertheless, grab the uniform. We're going to pull with our left, elbow with our right. That's a pull push, so much as pull pushing Kempo. And that would be fine. We'd probably take it down from there. You also could do this with a front to back switch, but we're not going to do that. As we pull up and strike, we're going to step through and take him down. So as you hit, as you start halfway through your step, you pulled up his right leg and you hit the solar plexus. As you continue stepping through, you continue to pull and continue to push. Everything past that initial elbow strike, the strike of the elbow, is just a push anyway. And he's down. From there, we have their right leg. We still have a hold of it. We assume they're going to try to hit us with their left leg. So we're going to strike it as we rotate. So this is a neutral bow. As I rotate, that's a modified neutral bow, fully rotated. Boom! So we hit to the inside of their left knee, circle it around, and now drop to a wide knee. Why a wide knee? Because I have to gain access to the groin, which is down lower, with a spear, but not a thrusting, jabbing spear, a slicing spear, and straight through this way. So as soon as we took them down, Back knuckle, circle, straight in. Again, back knuckle, circle your hand straight in. The reason is don't back knuckle and then strike. That waste action. You have to start and stop, start and stop. If you back knuckle and circle, you don't have to start and stop. Continue momentum in your flow. It's faster, a little stronger. <coughs> Ready in the air, gentlemen? So, step in and block. Ridge hand. Grab, step through, take it down. Back knuckle, and then drop to a wide knee on strike. Good, now facing each other, Mr. Lauer will do it on Mr. Ramirez. Mr. Ramirez is in a left neutral bow, and he's going to shuffle in with the right punch. One, Mr. Lauer steps in and blocks, and immediately reach hand with the groin. He still has his, uh, his arm checked, 
the offending arm, which is Mr. Mirror's right arm, is checked. He's going to slowly start reaching down to the leg and grab that gi. Start getting his elbow strike in position and then step through and take him down. All the way to that position. So he's in a good, strong stance, especially if you start moving someone's body around. Have good stances. Because if you start losing your balance or have no stability, you'll go to the ground and it becomes a wrestling match. All right, we'll address that later. So then he goes back knuckle to the inside of the leg, circle it right down to the groin. Okay, one more time. And he's one, two, grab leg, three more, strike, strike. This. Good, now switch positions. This allow us still doing the technique. Ready? And it's a little shuffle right punch. And one, two, grab, three, four, five, and strike. This. This. Good. And. Nice. So dance to death. All right, let's move on now to the purple belt techniques. Leaping crane. Uh, again, leaping crane, not one of the early techniques, but uh, very important principles on this. So if the punch is coming in, most folks, well, most Kempos that I've seen, uh, even some of them my own, but many when I, I used to travel around quite a bit and, uh, and whatnot, they'll, the punch is coming in. We want to move weapon, move target. We always talk about that. But when I leap off, they're leaping off here, they're leaping to, uh, to 1030 rather, but they're not turning their body. They just go right to the knife edge kit. But it's not. It's leaping off to the, on the angle. So again, you got 12. So you're going to leap off to 1030. And as you leap, you're also turning towards the opponent. So we're in this position. We stop off towards the opponent. You're parrying with one hand and striking middle and a strike with the other as you come in. It's not a big circle. People say, yeah, but you're jumping way over here, so it has to be a big circle. No, no. It's going to go from point A to point B, straight to their ribs. Because again, I'm stepping here, but I'm turning. And I want to stop their depth of penetration as much as I can. Also, coming straight in causes more injury to their ribs than if you're circling it this way. That depth of penetration, the button hook it at the end and come back to your side. So these go out and come back. And that's an interesting principle. Don't start, you know, everyone throwing their arms out to do some big version of this. It's literally an inward parry and a middle knuckle strike. They both go on triangles. And as you do this move, you jump off to the side. So you're just coming off to the side and facing your work. So I'm striking those ribs, boom. The knees be pointing towards your target. So once you come off, boom, kick, back knuckle. So you land with your back knuckle to his left kidney, shuffle, snatch. Okay, just get on downward diagonal to make sure you can reach the head. So again, natural stance, we're coming straight out. This is to parry, this is strike. So, pop. as soon as you come off, right away. So, stomp, kick, back knuckle. Ready? On each other. And one. So he's facing him. Two. Three and four. Good. Ready? And about half speed, just walk through it and go. Good. And other direction. Go. So the moment they're coming and just prior to landing, they should be getting hit already. And then once they've landed, they got hit once, parried once, and immediately go after that leg. All right? So in your, your mind, strike them before their foot even lands. In a perfect world. All right, good. And let's move on. Uh, snapping twig, so for left push. That's a great technique because it's a trapping technique. So we have different trap uh, moves, trapping moves later on in the system. But in the first part of the system is not as much. Snapping twig is one of the, really the first trapping move you find. So left push. Again, um, he pushes us, pin. All right, as soon as they touch us, a grab or a push, pin it. And so you have now you have control it. And you step back again. Why are we stepping back? To make a target we're going for more advantageous. We step back on this one to straighten their left arm. Because a straight arm is an arm we can strike and break. If he has a bent arm, it's going to be hard to break it in this fashion. So we step back, boom. So you can see my hand comes up this way and torques. Torques it. it rotates into the elbow strike. And this hand comes up and strikes down. So hit, hook on top, 
without losing contact. Pull down, strike. So you're pulling down to your right hip on their arm, which pulls the target, your, your uh, trachea, the side of their neck, towards you into that strike. And from there, hammer, and now collapse it. Okay? So as we come back, remember, these hands move at the same time. You don't, when you first learn it, you think, okay, pin, step, hit. Yeah, true, but just throw it all at once. As you start to step back with this foot, just boom, just get it up there. And one, hook on top, two, and get it right here, not up here. Check out his height by pulling down. Three, boom, and four. Ready? Let's see it. And one, hook on top, pull down two, and three, and four. Mm -hmm. So there have been, you'll, you'll see other versions, uh, other versions of this where people will do things like up here and then drop down. So they're going, pop, pop, and it's okay, but you lose contact. I don't like losing the contact and coming out here. As far as said, just whoop, get it in that vice of these two hands striking as you're coming back. So, and just as you hit, boom, come on top. So hit it. Again, the idea, when he responds to this, we don't know how he's going to respond. He might just start trying to pull away. Even. He might do a lot of things. But as soon as you hit it, just hook on top. You just hook on top, and then right away. So those two, those two moves you hit, those are just beautiful moves. And then just slide it down. Remember, don't bring this back here. Slide it down the arm. So I hit. So as I'm hitting, I'm still here. Then, boom, hit. And on this sandwich, like all sandwiches, don't cock your hand back. You hammer, and I just simply close the gap. I close the gap. Don't come back. A lot of guys do this and go, boom, and start, they start pulling back right away. It's fast, but it's even faster. As soon as you hit, just as you cross that threshold, just close it. This back foot is shooting my elbow into them. Okay? So in all your shuffles, sandwiches, it's always the same. Collapse it. Collapse it. All right, good. And one time. Nice. And Mr. Marins. Yeah, you're doing it now. Boom. Okay, good. And, and let's see, twirling wings. So twirling wings, very specifically, is for a two-hand choke, arm straight. Two-hand choke, arm straight. Why? Because Mr. Parker's saying, what if someone's behind you and they've checked out your depth? They've checked out your depth. Your ability just to step back on them, they've checked it out because they're behind you with the, their legs straight holding you. We'll see that in a minute though, but let's walk through it. So they've checked out your depth, meaning I can't move back to them. But I, they haven't checked out my height, so I can drop down. And they haven't checked out my width. So as I drop down, I sneak my foot over. I didn't move backwards at all. My foot did, but he's checking out my shoulders and hips mainly, mainly my shoulders. But my foot could sneak over, boom. Transitional twist stance as you chamber. So I'm still in the same depth as I was before. But now, as I start employing the width, meaning rotating to them, the breaking their grip is just turning your body. Your shoulder will break his left-hand grip on almost anybody. But to make sure, we, boom, break the grip, and as we come to neutral ball, I strike to the back of their arm with my left. Then, four bow with the elbow, check it up, elbow. Now let's do it this way. So they're checking, their grabbing this, choking us from behind. Arm, their arms are straight. So I just sneak my foot over. As I unwind, boom, hit the outside of their elbow in a neutral bow. This is a major strike. Not only to injure their arm, to make sure you clear it away. Get it out of your way so you can strike to their ribs in the forward bow. Check up, in the waiter's check, because when your hips are forward, this is a more comfortable position you have more reach. But as soon as you pivot to your neutral bow, it has to check down as we elbow. Right? It's more comfortable. In long one, going back to long one, it, it, we, we were taught, at Parker taught, at the end of long one, we do downward inside palm down blocks. And as everyone watching this video knows, those go to the perimeter of our body. To the perimeter of our body. Because it can. Without changing my hips and shoulders, I can reach all the way to the perimeter of my body. If I do downward inside block palm up, and if I don't change my hips and shoulders, this is as far as I can go. So my triceps sit in my pec, sit in the side of my body, because my palm's up. All, if I just simply rotate my palm down, 
my muscle flips over on the other side and now I can come across. It's the same thing in this technique. When you're doing this, you just did this, uh, this strike, you did the elbow, you came up and checked. Here, palm is down, a palm is up rather. If I had palm down, it's okay. Now that I'm uncomfortable, this is much easier. And strike. But from here, it has to be palm down. You can feel it. If I go to here, ah, everything starts locking up right here. Here, much better. I can extend better. That's why you switch your hand like that. But uh, gentlemen, do this uh, uh, nice and slow. I've seen a lot of strange versions of this uh, for a number of years. Um, I want to clear some of that up. So one, he sneaks his foot over. And on two, neutral bow, he strikes with his left arm. Boom. So see that starts taking Mr. Lauer's arms to the side. So it's, it's cross-checking him. At that point, not only is Mr. Lauer's left arm not a big threat, either is his right arm, because he's turned sideways. Mr. Ramirez then goes to the forward bow, cracks him in the ribs. Now comes and checks it on the outside, and then elbows again. And it's important to keep that hand, the right hand up on his arms, and if you felt you might be too far away in that last strike, you just shuffle in. Okay? Good. And one more time. So his arms are straight. So Mr. Mears can't just move back because he's not letting him. But he can sneak that foot over. And once he starts to rotate, he breaks that grip on that side and continues it with this. So you break the grip with your shoulders, and then you strike the arm with your vertical outward block. Notice that you're not in an extended outward position yet. Vertical. And then four bow, boom. Now check up and see his palm is up and then strike. Palm is down. Okay? Twirly wings. Alright. So, do it like that. And capture leaves. So capture leaves um, is for someone getting you in some sort of figure lock and compelling you to come with them. Alright? When I first learned this technique, I was working as a bouncer at a pub down in uh, Redondo Beach, and, uh, and I remember learning this technique because one of the things the instructor who taught me said, well, you know, like if a bouncer at a club or a bar is, you know, making you leave by bending your fingers back, I'm thinking, number one, I don't think I'm ever going to be in the position to have someone have to be throwing me out of a bar. And number two, since I was a bouncer, I never would grab someone just by the fingers and try to lead them out. There's too much can happen. But, apparently, and talking to a lot of the guys that I worked with, it was a technique that they were taught as a doorman <laughs> to bend someone's hand, wrist, or finger and start leading them out. So, there was uh, automatic validity with this. So, the idea behind this technique really is purposeful compliance. They have our fingers locked, that's our 12, that's our 130, and they're trying to take us forward that way. Just get ahead of it, purposely comply with them, and raise your hand. So get it to that position before they were getting to that position to relieve the pressure but also, if you start going with someone, uh, it, it, it lulls them into a false sense of security. As soon as your foot lands, your left elbow, boom, should be hitting them in their kidney. So it's not uh, outward, it's not up here, it's a back elbow. And then immediately come check their arm and do an outward elbow. So it's a short technique, it's just those, those three moves. But the idea is, when I first learned this, I was taught to come here and shoot the, the fingers off and then spin and hit. And Mr. Parker said, no, that's, a, that's, that's good. He says, but get the elbow in sooner. If you have to do this first and come around, get the elbow in sooner. The minute your foot lands, you should be, boom, hitting with the elbow. And then that loosens the grip up there, and then slip it out, whop, hit it with an outward elbow. Okay? Good. And let's see it. Uh -huh. And he just and two. So one more time. So he... Bends his fingers and two. Yeah. Sorry, so uh, one, just one time. The first move. So one. Ooh. So it's this position. You're doing a, a back elbow. As he turns, if he were to do a back elbow now, it would probably slip and miss Anthony with the other hand. Would miss. But an outward elbow on the second one can't is not going to miss. Okay. Ooh. So the first one is a back elbow. The second one is an outward elbow. Okay. And now, the other side. Mm -hmm. And one, two. Uh, one more time on that one. And one, two. Nice. So back elbow, then outward elbow. All right, good. And uh, moving on. 
Let's go to Bluebell. So parting wings, parting wings. Uh, parting wings, remember, there, it's not a defensive move, that first move. They're off, it's an offensive move. It's an outward hand sword and an outward hand sword. So you're bringing them up because the push that's coming in may have their hands close together, may have their hands far apart, don't know. Bring your hands together just in case. Wedge between their arms as you move away. As you move away, but boom, as you turn, these go here. I don't go to 3 and 9 with my hand swords. I go to 130, 1030. So if that's my 12, it's 1030, that's 130. Strike away. I'm in a neutral bow, striking away. Feet, hips, and shoulders are all on a 45 degree angle. I'm looking towards the opponent, and I'm striking on the 45, so my body's not turned yet. Now, go to a four bow, strike. A lot of folks do the strike to the throat. It's not. It's technically to the heart, or go just below to those ribs, just below the left chest muscle. So look at the patch, and we just teach them, strike just under the patch. Okay? That's where you're trying to strike. And this hand's here in a ready position. Every time as we strike, like playing pool, you make one shot, but you're already setting up your next shot. So this one's here, not anywhere else, because I want to go straight into the throat now, check down their body, a physical, a frictional check, and then boom, middle knuckle strike again, transitional forward bow, and then come back out. So forward bow and pop it back out. One more time. So we're coming in together, and strike, forward bow, boom, hard. So that back leg and back hand. And then back up, check down, boom. Okay, ready, facing each other. And one, two, three, check down, four. Good, up, 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 opposite side, other direction. So do it by the numbers, and one, two, three, and four. Good, good, good. So on, on this one, make sure, once you get them opened up, this strike, just, to, just to, so you see, it's definitely gonna, it's a thrusting action, but uh, it's a blocking action, so I'm not just I'm not just going to go keep my hips here and go here. So it's not a hit. It's so I want to go boom in this. And just as you hit, although it's going to snap back to here, as you hit, you hit your forward bow, and it's transitional, meaning I hit, hit boom. So I'm not staying my hips this way and hitting and hitting. That's not getting a lot of power. I'm boom. I'm hitting with that back leg. So you're going all the way in, still getting that locked leg, which gives you that backup mass, boom, and then hit it again. So, right back in. So it's hit, up, up now. Forward bow, but it's transitional and then back up. It's not just here, and it's not just turning with my back leg not locked. It's turning with back leg locked. That little lock, that transitional forward bow, very strong. Ready to try it? And go. Booyah! Good. So emphasize that first strike. Get their arms apart, but you have not really hurt them yet. Hitting their arms, not all that painful. It doesn't really cause a lot of injury. Hit them here and hit them in the throat, and that causes injury. All right, good. And darting mace. So darting mace, two-hand grab to the right wrist. In other techniques, we pin and turn and manipulate, but this one's more like crossing talent. Crossing talon, we pull back, and then we step in and break their grip, and then re-grab. This one's very similar, but we're, this is the idea. Is not only it's a one-hand grab, like crossing talent, it's a two-hand grab, much stronger. But you're still going to attempt the same thing. Pull back, and you're still going to start stepping, but instead of stepping on the angle, I'm going to step straight, because now I decided to attack the attack. So we pull back. And as I start stepping in and going over to re-grip, I'm going to strike their forearm, the high point of the forearm, again, part of the radial nerve. The minute I land with a lot of power, hit it hard, straight back up to the face. And then hit the arm again, down this way, it hits and it turns into a pressing check, but hit it, hit it and then check it, Wow! as I did that vertical punch. That starts moving them back. Now, you're simply going to step through as you hit two times, boom. But teach it and walk through it many times, pass through the cat stance. That's when the hand sword's hitting is when I pass through this position. You're not stopping here, but pass through the position. When does the hand sword hit? It hits when you pass through the cat stance. Strike to the throat, step through heel bone. Okay? 
First part's important though, gentlemen, uh, to do it. So, uh, yep. So Mr. Lauer starts to pull back and then steps in, hits, and so he, and he got a bit of a re-grab, that's good. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's mainly the strikes, but you are, you are attempting it, but, but make sure you're focusing a lot of your energy on hitting that arm. So he steps in and hits, Oof. right to the face. Now check down hard Oof. and punch, and then strike, strike. So let's go to the other side now. Mm -hmm. So he, so he slowly he starts to re-grab, pull back and re-grab. Step in one, two, three, as he now punches and steps through. Good, good. All right. So again, if, when we're saying start to pull back, but if they're real strong, it's just going to be it's going to be difficult. And that's the idea. Well, what if I can't get this re-grab and I, I don't know to do these other things? Then just hammer that on. Remember I said, if you're teaching someone martial arts, they're going to go somewhere on an island by themselves, uh, well, maybe with uh, uh, one other person who's a criminal. And this one person you're sending on the island alone with this other person who's a criminal. So this person you're sending has to defend themselves, and you only had a minute to teach them something. If you're going to teach them something for a grab, don't go into anything else other than take your knuckle and hit their hand. If they're grabbing, hit their hand. Just simple thing in the world. Strike their hand and it makes most human beings open up their hand very quick. So on this one, with the two hand grab, we're not striking right there. We have that in other techniques. We are starting to pull back because if I pull this way, generally he's going to pull that way. Because that's what he If I start going here, he starts going there, which is, that's kind of what I want. So as I start to pull, boom, then I hit to the high point of his form. And that makes him want to let go real bad. And just as you hit, boom, boom. So it hits and then hit up to the face, but it starts to move back. But it's one, two. The thing I want to emphasize is you're going one, two, but on the next move, let's say he has not let go yet. I hit him hard, and I hit him hard. Hit this again as you come back down. So you're going one, two, three, and then So as soon as you hit down again, you hit this thing twice now, and it's hard. Then you move back, then But hit that arm twice. It's not just a check. It's a major strike, which then you sometimes call it a striking check. But it's more of a strike than a check. Good. And one more time. So it's a double grab. Step in. One, two, Push. three, Push. four, five. Good. Guardian mace, guardian mace. And thunder hammers. Thunder hammers. Step through right punch. Again, a lot of techniques we have, for, especially in the first uh, three or four or five belts, for right punch, because most uh, assailants are male, and most male assailants are right handed. And most male assailants that are right handed, generally punch with their first attack. So we have a lot of, t a lot of techniques against right hand punches from male assailants. So, uh, right straight punch, step in and block. We have techniques where at this range, we can hit to the groin, a weapon there, or we can punch the ribs, or we even can come in and elbow, or up to the throat, right? On this one though, we're gonna shuffle in, use a different weapon, and get, not be in front of them anymore, be to the side of them. So I shuffle and strike, roll it out, hammer, and strike, okay? So when you're looking on, um, on uh, different ideas of when we're talking about variable expansion, expand upon all the variables given to you in any particular situation. So from here, remember we have attacking mace, or we have uh, dance of death, or we have flashing wings, or we have sleeper. This one, all of those are same, basically still in front of them, either at medium range or at close range, but we're still staying in front of them. This one, you're shuffling all the way to the side one, so I'm not even here anymore. I'm here. So as he stepped in, I step in. So you're already close. As opposed to a lot of our techniques, we'll step back, and then you meet. You have this range. Here, you're already very close to him. So I'm here, but I'm going to shuffle all the way to here. Very different. I'm trying to hit him with my point of contact, but the strike, much like when I come under to do uh, lone kimono, I have a bent arm, and it straightens. On this one, I have a bent arm. I'm doing like an uppercut, but I'm doing like an uppercut in someone here. As I go to hit here, as if I just punched his very short friend, and then I turn it, okay. so it's that rotation from the linear strike 
to a path of action. I deviate my angle and go this way now. But it's just like this action is this action. So it's not whoo, it's not that. It's not a straight arm. That's powerful, but it's not as powerful because again, I'm shuffling in, I'm rotating, and I'm getting that torque. Boost. That torque. Boost. Just like I have the torque, this is the torque. So you get the torque, and on this one, it makes it bend over a bit. Boost. So we're coming here, it starts to bend over. I roll this out because even though he's hurt, I want to roll this to make sure I check this a little bit. Just as so I roll this, Boost. hit. So at this point, you're here, it slides up as I check. See, I was here, it takes its place as I come around and hammer. So from this position, you come around here and boom. Soon as you come here, you're, you're hitting with your knee as best you can. This is circling, boom, and hitting. All right, so we're here and, and roll it around and soon as you come around, boom. This is kidney, one, okay? Try to get that transition. One more time, and one, yep. Okay, one more time, one more time. So one, just to block. You see he's already close. He's gonna shuffle in with a push dragon strike. Now he's next to him. Rolls it out, checks hammer, and then the other hand goes up like four, and then check over to the arm and hammer. One more time, all the way through. And go. Thunder and hammer. Good, other side. And go. Good. All right, face yourself up. Number 13, circling wing. Another one of the original techniques. Uh, this for a two-hand choke from behind. Now, this technique works whether it's a two-hand choke straight arm, like twirling wings, or it's two-hand choke bent arms. We do it one for one bent. And again, so they're right on our back, they're close, and they're trying to choke us. We're going to step away on a 45 degree angle. Step away, chamber. And you do chamber. This isn't a, an old archaic thing. Hey, we don't chamber anymore. No, you do chamber at some points because it, it makes it advantageous. If you have your hands here, you're not going to be in a position to throw this next weapon. So you chambered over. Go over their arms that are choking you. We're going to assume they're aggressive and they're still trying to choke you. Pull it down, poke to the eyes. Check down their arm, elbow up and reverse the hammer fist. So again, we're going to all face uh, towards three now. R3, five, uh huh? So we're going to step over and chamber, and assume both hands are still choking me. Your arms are still in place. I go over their arms, come down, and pin their arms, trap their arms underneath my armpit. A trapping technique. Poke, check down on the arms, upward elbow, and hammer fist. Okay? I've uh, done a walk through it. Mr. Lauer is doing it on Mr. Ramirez. So he steps in chambers, goes over the arms, comes down and pins. So at least Mr. Ramirez's right arm is still pinned under the armpit. Then he checks down on the arm, upward elbow as he transitions through that horse stance, and then hammer down the arm. Okay? One more time. The opposite direction, gentlemen. So this one's pretty straightforward, but again, you're not knocking their arms away. You're going over their arms and pinning. So he steps in chambers, goes over the arms and pins as he pokes. Checks down the arm, elbow, and oh, back to position. So circling wing, circling wing. Ready? And natural dance. And moving on to green. Good. Let's see uh, begging hands. So begging hands, again, like all techniques, you can start on the right side, the left side. You know, you say, well, I want my strong side behind, my right foot behind me, or I want my strong side in front, whatever. So this is very universal, but nevertheless, this is the way we teach it, the way Ed Parker taught to me. So two-hand grab from the front. You're going to come this way with your hands to try to break their grip. If you want to go this way, generally, fake the opposite direction. Whatever direction you want to go, especially when they're grabbing you, they have a physical grab on you, any kind of grab, and you want to move in a certain direction, whether it's towards them, away from them, doesn't matter. Whatever direction you want to move, fake the opposite direction. So on this one, you fake in just a little bit with your hands. And as you step back then, whack, come out hard and go breaking their uh, wrist or their grip against the, going against their thumb and driving your knuckles into their uh, wrists. That's a neutral bow. 
Slide to your cat stance. Kick to the groin, land. That hopefully will bend them over and move them back a little bit. Now kick into the solar plexus. They're probably bent over slightly. So kick into the solar plexus, but probably somewhere around there. And then shuffle in and strike. Um, on this, uh, Mr. Mears. So what I was saying, when you break the script, it's not just going around. It's not just this. It's coming around, and I see my, these knuckles. These knuckles, I get into his wrist. So as I'm starting to break his grip on the thumb, I also get the knuckles into this part of his wrist on the tendons and press into it. As I'm going out, I'm pressing in. So it gives, it gives a little extra. But I fake this way, and if I try to go this way, he probably is going to try to pull me that way. So I fake in and then go out. Keep these hands out here, though, as a check. Okay, you don't come to fight him position yet. Keep him here. Immediately kick to the groin, boom, which backs him up a little bit. And now it's usually on a 45 degree angle, just kick, boom, and land. This is an important part here. When I strike, see, I'm coming in with my heel palms, I'm coming up with my heel palms, and I'm coming together with my heel palms. If I bring my heel palms together, that's changing the width. If I bring them in, that's depth. If I raise them up, that's height. It's all three. Because when I make contact with his body, I want to continue past the surface and go to the subterranean targets and keep going in and squish them. So as we're going here, I'm actually, I want to try to connect my hands. So I hit his ribs about here and then try to connect your hands like back towards the spine. So as you're coming in, do that part so it hits. So it, it hits, it doesn't just touch and come back. I try to drive and connect my hands back there. As you hit, these are up here. Okay? But in, up, and boom. So this, this is the action. Down here, to up here. Down here, to up here. You hit them in the ribs, but they start down here. In, up, and together. Ready? And. So grab him. And. Fake in, and go out. And then ball kick. And then left ball kick to the solar plexus. Shuffle in. Boom. Okay? And all the way through. And go. Boom. Boom. Good, Mr. Lauer, if you can do it now. Yeah, right from there. So he goes back, and then kick, and kick. Yeah. Now, one more time, Mr. Lauer. And go. Nice. Good. And Reiki Mace. So Reiki Mace for a two hand propeller grab, pulling in. And this uh, is one of the few techniques that's very uh, one sided, meaning your right hand does almost everything. So, and there's nothing wrong with that, just an uh, observation. There's a few techniques in the system that are, are everything's geared towards right-handed, then you practice on the left just to have that cross-training, but uh, most times your other hands interact a little bit more. In this one, they're grabbing us and pulling us in. And what's it called? When we go with their action, purposeful compliance. So go with them, but again, they grabbed us, so we grab them. So we step in, get to the stomach. So Reiki Mace, they pull us, great. They're going to pull our fist right into their stomach, just like when they, we do Mace Regression, and they pull us right in to their face with Mace Regression. Same thing here, boom, into the stomach. But now, do the Mace Regression Strike, and it's exactly like the Mace Regression Strike. You come out, and it doesn't circle around. It comes out, like Mr. Parker said, shoot it straight over that arm, right to the face. Hit it with the little knuckle first, and get that serrated effect. Don't loop it anywhere. Right through the face. Now strike down on their arms and bring the face and neck back in, right back to the throat, and then sound. Again, there's, there's where that collapses again. Just collapse it, just collapse it. Don't, don't uh, circle it around. So again, they pull us in, these hands move together. These hands move together as you start stepping. Boom. As soon as you hit, pop, boom. Then hit, hit, and hit. So on each other. They pull, step in one, and bring it straight out and shoot it right back in two, three, four, and then five. Mm -hmm. One more time. And one, and two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. In opposite direction. And go. Right. So just, and try to get, as I step in, he's just pulling me straight in. As I land, this all hits. The minute I land, boom, boom, hit straight away. Turn your head to the side, turn your head to the left. So as we, as we step in, as soon as I hit, pop, pop, and as I hit, watch. As I hit, and it bends him, as I come to his face, 
Most times, you're going to hit his arm first. You just will. On your way, it just go straight through it. So we have a technique where we hit and go up. We have a technique where they pull us and we go straight, we start straight in. This technique kind of combines them. You hit and then come out, more than likely hit the arm to hit the face. So as you're coming in, I'm right there. As soon as you hit, so I hit once, twice, three times. Now strike down right across. You're not doing the turning thing like you did in uh, trigger salute. It's straight down, straight back in, and then come in the center. Okay? Good. And basic 12. Do Ricky base one more time in the air. And go. Good. All right. Flashing wings. Flashing wings for a step through straight right punch. We did the beginning of this later uh, earlier for a right punch. One of the many things you can do from this position. Well, this one says, all right, what if they're real close? And you're a little, little too close to do my punch, like attacking mace, their body's closer. Just go to a forward bow, boom. I see a lot of people shuffle in and do a closed nail on this. Mr. Barker called this a shock absorber. He says, Brian, you want to hit with power, don't be in a shock absorber stance. This is boom. Whatever, if I hit something that's a little stronger, more solid than me, I'll absorb back on it. Which, if that's what you want, that's fine. In certain situations you do, especially if you're going for a lot of speed. But for power, you want to make sure, boom, if I lock that leg, that elbow is going through almost anything I hit with it. Okay? Lock that leg. So it's block, lock the leg, but flashing wings. Take it through, in a perfect world, grab their face, pivot back to neutral bow, pop, outward elbow, it's just a slight little shift. And the next move, there is no shift in your stances. You hit the outward elbow, strike right to the back side of their neck. So it's the back slash right side of their neck. Slide down their arm as you strike the back of the neck. Full on back, check, and now shoot to a kneeling stance. Remember, striking with the hand sword, going deep into the trachea, and then continuing on with the heel palm to the jaw. Okay, so that's a compound strike. So we're stepping in one, two, three, four, five, check down, six. Ready? On each other. And, and one, and then forward bow, two. And again, right there, the face is there. If you can grab it or claw it, great. But you don't, don't take away from the other parts of your technique to try to get that in. And then outward elbows, you come to your neutral. And then hands over the back of the neck. Slide down that arm and check it as you hit. And check and strike. Okay? And just about half speed, go all the way through it. Good, good, good. So on, uh, on this one, so we're doing this. We block, and you go to four foot, boom. So I block it, so I'm in contact with it. I strike. I'm still in contact. I'm trying to claw, and my shoulder's contacting his arm now. Let's just say we keep him here. I do outward. I'm still here. From there, strike. Now check down. So make sure you check down that arm as you strike. That's knee strike, uh, knee strike to hit the knee, back to the neck, check down again. So I check down with this one, and as I hit, I check down this one. Pin it to his body, and then come up. So remember, throat and then chin. So throat and then chin. And that's where it ends. Okay? In the air, face 12. Step in a block. And forward bow. Boom. And outward elbow. Hand sword. Left hand sword. Check down and strike. Good all the way through, and go. Nice, nice. Good. And let's see, uh, repeated devastation. Repeated devastation for uh, full Nelson. Hands are up, feet are apart, and you're slightly hunched over, head is down. Step off to your right, fist to the head. Residual marriage of gravity means continue dropping down and settling as you strike. Not to the front, like crashing wings, to the side. You strike to the side and hit their biceps. And that's the course, both those are intended to break their grip. Now, you went out with the right, come back in with the right as you punch. Lock everything up. Have your feet more like mine, so if you come here, you have no, no stability, front to back or lateral. This gives you a little modicum of stability. So from here, re-grab that arm. Their arms should be right about here, coming through the back of our arms. 
grab their wrist, step heel toe. So I don't step straight to 12, I step just off my line as I turn and pull them into a forward bow with a right hand elbow strike. So when I step over my line with my left foot, so now when I turn, I'm in a good toe heel alignment towards the opponent in a forward bow. As you come back, we're going to come back and re-grab. Our right hand grabs their left wrist. This is sort of an addition to this technique. Technique really ended there. Mr. Parker just put on the second half, the second part, in case you missed the first one or in case it's there. And also to make it a little bit harder. And now step across, heel toe, and then turn. Boom. Repeated devastation. So one more time. So this one, this one is a lot, this is one of those techniques where a lot of guys have a lot of different ideas about it. And most of them are good ideas. Just if you want to know the way we do it, the way Parker did it with me, this is how we did it. So hands are up, full Nelson. Step off, one, two. So when asked, where's the power in, that, in these strikes? Residual marriage of gravity, meaning dropping down even lower. Then come back up, the right foot did all the stepping there. Now grab their wrist, step in, turn, forward bow. Come back as you re grab their wrist, step in, turn, forward bow. Okay, gentlemen, let's see it. Um, yes. So he steps off, fists, try to hit him in the face with both his fists, and then drops straight down on the biceps. So he wants to make sure his hands aren't here, they're more out to the side like you make your muscles. And then you come back in with your right foot and punch down. Pin those hands in there. Grab wrist, step heel toe, and turn an elbow, and come back, and grab, and turn an elbow. Okay? One of the, one of the uh, things Mr. Parker emphasized when we were doing this is when you're grabbing, don't pin this in really tight. This arm. I got this arm. But if you pin this really tight and you step and turn, <laughs> it's like, where'd he go? I can't reach him. So that's why the second move is really an addition. You get him to here, and as you step, I'm really stepping here. I didn't have to pull in. I'm assuming he's still going to be trying to hang on to me. All right, unless he wasn't very serious as hell. So we're grabbing here, and as we turn, I pull this, but I want to make sure this one doesn't, it, as I turn, it doesn't have to come with me. I'm not pulling him around. I'm just sliding and hitting. So now when I come back, if it's there, it's there. If it's not, don't worry about it. Even if it's not there, step off, hit again. This is an extra thing. So don't think, I have to hit that other arm. You don't. The main thing is, once you do everything, just step and pull a hit. Even if you don't even grab their arm, step and pull a hit. Ready? In the air. Step off. Fist. And drop down. Now punch up. Grab, step, pull a hit. Come back. Grab, step, pull a hit. All right, good. All right, excellent. So, work on those so that completes most of the base techniques. You have an idea of what the attack is, what the sequence is, some of the principles and concepts behind them, some of the history behind some of them, and I hope that's helpful. All right, feet together. Horse, are you? Close.